or at least none which prove both of the original premises. Propositions, the terms of which are not convertible, cannot be circularly demonstrated at all. And since convertible terms occur rarely in actual demonstrations, it is clearly frivolous and impossible to say that demonstration is reciprocal and that therefore everything can be demonstrated. Quote, is frivolous and impossible to say that demonstration is reciprocal and that therefore everything can be demonstrated. In other words, there has to be something that can't be demonstrated. He just shows if you, if you say anything other than that, you are stuck in a hopeless bog of idiocy. Quote, since the object of pure scientific knowledge cannot be other than it is, the truth obtained by demonstrative knowledge will be necessary. And since demonstrative knowledge is only present when we have a demonstration, it follows that demonstration is an inference from necessary premises. So we must consider what are the premises of demonstration, i.e., what is their character. And as a preliminary, let us define what we mean by an attribute, true in every instance of its subject, an essential attribute, which is different from an attribute, and a commensurate and universal attribute. So now we're going to make three distinctions. I call true in every instance what is truly predicable of all instances, not of one to the exclusion of others, but all instances, and at all times, not at this time or that time only. Example given, if animal is truly predicable, predicable of every instance of man, then if it be true to say this is a man, this is an animal is also true, and if the one be true, now the other is true now. A corresponding account holds if point is in every instance predicable as contained in the line. That's in a, a geometry. Uh, there is evidence for this in the fact that the objection that we raise against a proposition put to us as true in every instance. So when someone says, here's something true in every instance, he says there's evidence for this fact in the fact that the objection that we raise against a proposition, true in every instance, in which or an occasion on which it is not true, is that's all we do is we raise an instance where it's not true to prove them wrong. And then their theory is in a, a, a downfall. So he's so, well, I mean, that's like if someone came up with a lightning storm that wasn't composed of lightning and they could just point to it in reality. Ben Franklin's hypothesis will be a wreck. Continuing, essential attributes are one, in parenthesis, such as belong to their subject. Now, two is quite a ways down, so hold on. Such as belong to their subject as elements in its essential nature. Example given, line thus belongs to triangle and point to line. There's no triangle that has no line and there's no line that doesn't have a point in it. For the very being or substance of triangle and line is composed of these elements which are contained in the formula defining triangle and line. Two, so essential attributes are one, such as we've just seen, and two, such that while they belong to certain subjects, the subjects to which they belong are contained in the attributes own defining formula, part of the definition. Thus, straight and curved belong to line. Odd and even, prime and compound, square and oblong, to number. And also the formula of defining any one of these attributes contains its subject, example given line or numbers as the case may be. Extending this classification to all other attributes, I distinguish those that answer the above description as belonging essentially to their respective subjects whereas attributes related in neither of these two ways to their subjects I recall accidents or coincidence example given musical or white is a coincident of animal I think by mus a musical animal of course would be an animal that makes music um, so and whether the animal is white in color or whether it's musical is a coincident um, other things are essentials further A 
that is essential which is not predicated of a subject other than itself. Example, the walking thing walks and is white in the virtue of being something else besides, whereas substance in the sense of whatever signifies a this somewhat is not what it is in virtue of being something else besides. Congratulations if you stuck with it through there. Things, then, not predicated of a subject, I call essential. Things not predicated of a subject, I call essential. Things predicated of a subject, I call accidental or coincidental. Coincidental. In another sense, again, B, a thing consequentially connected with anything, is essential. One not so connected is coincidental. An example of the latter, an example of anything not consequentially connected, is, quote, while he was walking, it lightened, meaning lightning struck, uh, end quote. The lightning was not due to his walking. It was, we should say, a coincidence, a coincidence. If, on the other hand, there is a consequential connection, the predication is essential. Uh, for example, if a beast dies when its throat is being cut, then its death is also essentially connected with the cutting, because the cutting was the cause of death, not death a coincident of the cutting. So he says there has to be a very careful distinction between what causes something and what comes along during something, or with something. So you can't just He's saying that scientific knowledge pushes out those people who just say this comes along with that. He was walking and lightning struck. That's like people who just do these statistical things and then they come out and say cancer is caused by you know, wearing hats or using cell phones. Continuing, so far then, as concerns the sphere of connections scientifically known in the unqualified sense of that term, all attributes within that sphere are essential either in the sense that their subjects are contained in them or in the sense that they are contained in their subjects. They are necessary as well as consequentially connected with their subjects. For it is impossible for them not to inhere in their subjects, either simply or in the qualified sense that one or other of a pair of opposites must inhere in the subject. Example given. In line, there must be either straightness or curvature, you can't have both, or oddness or evenness in number. For within a single identical genus, the contrary of a given attribute is either its privative or its contradictory. Example given, within number, what is not odd is even. In as much as within this sphere, even is a necessary consequent of not odd. Right? It's included in the definition of any number that's not odd. So, since any given predicate must be either affirmed or denied of any subject, essential attributes must inhere in their subjects of necessity. Thus, then, so here we get to the conclusion of, of that rather thick bit we've been going through. We have established the distinction between the attribute which is true in every instance and the attribute which is essential.